Okay. This is, I think, the least technical difficulties I've ever had to deal with starting a new game. In a long time, anyway, knock on wood. There's, there's gotta be some actual wood in here to knock on. Anyway, hello! Welcome, everybody. We are starting a new game. We are starting Ghost Trick, which has a totally sweet, totally rocking soundtrack so far. Oh man, I'm sorry. If this is any indication, uh, we, we, I, I might have to give you the, the warning that the Lauren may be rendered unable to continue due to the rocking of the soundtrack from time to time. <sighs> okay, so, hello. Uh, show of hands, who has played this game before versus who hasn't played this game before? I have never played this game before. I know almost nothing about this game. Okay, so what I knew about this game... Oh my god, this is so good. It's just so good. Okay. Is there anyone here who's never seen me stream before? Because if so, I, uh, you're getting a sense of what you're in for, <laughs> for better or for worse. Okay, so what do I know about Ghost Trick? I wasn't 100% sure that it actually had ghosts in it, but that kind of looks like a ghost with sunglasses. So that indicates to me that there might be a ghost or it could be like, not actually a ghost, but there's a ghost logo because something else is named for a logo or something. I don't know. I think it is made by the Ace Attorney team. I think it plays like an Ace Attorney game. I've never personally played an Ace Attorney game, but I have watched an ex play through a few of them. Um, I don't know how well I remember them. So if this has universe tie-ins, I may or may not recognize them. Um, and there's a dog. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you played as the dog, but I actually am thinking you probably don't play as the dog. Unless you're like a ghost possessing a dog, solving crimes because you're, a we have two detective games going on right now, which is wild. Um, I never look up fan art of games that I'm playing. Um, speaking of, I have a piece of Paper Mario Thousand Year Door fan art that I bought at MAGFest that I will not show on this stream because I don't want to spoil things for folks who are watching the stream who haven't played that game. Maybe I'll spoiler tag it and post it on the Discord so you can see. Um, but yeah, so there's, there's a dog. Okay, so Ace Attorney is Phoenix Wright. You may have heard people talk about Phoenix Wright. Um, but apparently not all the games have Phoenix, so it's not the Phoenix Wright games, it's the Ace Attorney games, because that also includes Miles Edgeworth and the other guy. The other guy. I don't remember his name. Anyway, that's fine. <laughs> anyway, so that's all I know about Ghost Trick. Apollo Justice, thank you. Isn't, isn't his sidekick named Trixie? Man. Okay, so so this is how, how well I know Ace Attorney. It's floating around in a mess. Trucy, why did I think Trucy? I don't know. My brain, it's still not working right. Anyway, so that's what we know going into this. And I remember that Ace Attorney has good music, which I didn't know while it was being played because the person playing it likes to play games with the volume turned all the way off. Um, but then uh, Undertale had some music that was inspired by um, some Ace Attorney music because the dating section is inspired by Ace Attorney. Um, and I was like, this sounds really cool. So then I went and listened to Ace Attorney music and I was like, oh, this is cool. I don't remember this many electric guitars in the Ace Attorney soundtrack. Maybe I'm misremembering. 
But this is like... What this soundtrack... Okay, no, we're, we're talking... Okay, if we're talking about my ex who played those games, we're talking about somebody who played Owen Don with the volume off. So, just a very different experience of the world than mine. <laughs> That's right, it's a rhythm game. Um, so... I really like electric guitars. And I'm gonna say, right off the start of this, I'm gonna give the soundtrack an 11 out of 10 for electric guitar usage. So I'm really excited about that. Um, Cause that's my favorite instrument. <laughs> you know what this makes me think of? This is an extremely 90s feeling soundtrack to me. Um, it makes me think of, okay, so my band has a cover of Power Rangers the Movie the Game. So the name of it is Power Rangers the Movie the Game the Medley. Cause it's a medley, you see, we're very funny. I named that, I'm very good at naming things. Um, this feels like that kind of driving, like, anime Power Rangers something or other, like, and I don't know if we're gonna, like, get that vibe when we actually dive into the game, but I don't care, because I've got electric guitars. Question, is there voice acting in this game? No, you've made it just in time. Yeah, no, I remember the guitar. I remember there was one guy who who had guitar stuff. Um, anyway, there is not voice acting. All right, if you haven't watched me in a few years, I will warn you. As an accessibility thing, I have started reading text and dialogue out loud in games that don't provide me with voice acting. I am not an actor, but I am a storyteller, so you're gonna have to deal with whatever voices come out. I don't do accents very well, but I have fun with it. Hopefully you'll have fun with it. It makes life a little bit easier for folks who are not watching the screen or who are vision impaired. So this is gonna be... Okay, so what I hope is that this will give me like larger than life characters to do voices for because I have a much easier time of that. Um, and uh, with the soundtrack, I kind of feel like we're going to. I have this like feeling of what the vibe of this game is going to be based on the soundtrack. I'm, okay. Well, anyway, so that's going to happen. Um, I think that all of you folks have seen me before, but just in case, before we dive in, we will dive in very shortly. This is a short preamble, relatively speaking. If you'll recall, no spoilers, no backseating. If I need help, chat hat. If you haven't seen me in a few years, surprise, we literally have a chat hat now. Also, it came out. So <laughs> these two things are vaguely related. When I wear this hat, it means you are allowed to answer my questions. However, I will give you like boundaries for like, such as like yes or no, or like, is it this or this or this one answer only? Or if I am stuck and I need a hint, I will ask you to give me a hint in the form of a haiku. We call it a hint coup. There is on our Discord server a stream spoilers channel that has um, separate sections for each game I'm playing so you don't have to get spoiled on other things I'm playing, which right now is only Disco Elysium. Hop on in there, join the stream spoilers channel. Somebody make the ghost trip um, thing if you haven't yet. Um, folks there usually talk amongst themselves to develop the hint coup and then the hint coup is provided to me here in chat. So that is that is how this goes. Um, but no hint coup until I say I'm ready. If you're not sure if something's a spoiler error on the side of caution, try not to be like, oh, here comes the good stuff. Oh, here comes the good stuff. Like, don't do that because my whole thing is that I tend to read into things and stories. Don't give me any more tools to play with. Um, and uh, uh, if that's why we have the stream spoilers channel. So when you're like, oh my God, I can't believe she's about to get to my favorite part or oh my God, I can't believe she misunderstood that thing or whatever big feeling you're having, I get it. I too have big feelings. Um, that's what stream spoilers is for. So all of you can have your big feelings as loudly as you want without spoiling the game for me. So then everybody has a great experience. You get to yell collectively. I've been told it's very fun. Um, and you get to see me bumble around and mini golf to my heart's content. 
anyone who is relatively new here, um, who's not familiar with the term mini golfing, it references my Final Fantasy X playthrough. Basically, there is stuff going on in the game and I will start extrapolating what I think is gonna happen. Usually when we talk about mini golfing, there's some wild predictions. I'm making some assumptions and I know I am. And sometimes people are just like, where did she get that from? And sometimes people are like, how did she guess that? Kind of goes either way. Um, so yeah, have I forgotten anything? Um, be polite, be kind. This isn't Disco Elysium, so no swears. Try to keep it relatively clean. I'm guessing this is at worst a teen rated game. Um, so I will actually be on my Lauren behavior. If you want to hear me drop some F-bombs, you can watch on Thursdays when I play Disco Elysium, the slowest Disco Elysium playthrough in the world. Um, I don't know how slow I'll be with this. We'll see. Um, I don't know what to expect. I have no idea how streaming an Ace Attorney style game is going to be. Um, but you know what? We're going to find out together. I have a controller. I don't know if it's working, but I have it. It's not working. Oh, I bet I know why it's not working. Cause this this thing's not working. <sighs> I got an, I got a USB hub. Hold on. Is this the right one? My USB hub's not working, right? Yeah. Did you hear that? Did you hear that sound? And then my controller shook, and now it's got the little light. All right, we have controller. the guitar <laughs> I really like guitars okay we're so we're not gonna dig into extras and we're not gonna dig into options because at this point I know nothing about the game and I suspect that digging into things will give me hints <sighs> am I gonna play as a sweet ghost with sweet sunglasses is this like the ghost of Johnny Bravo is that why I'm getting 90s vibes because like the, I feel like his sunglasses are kind of shaped like that I don't know. Anyway. I don't know, like we've got numbers and gears and a ghost in the word ghost. Thanks for subscribing, Blues. Um, yeah, Johnny Bravo died and now solves crimes in the afterlife. That, that's, that's kind of the vibe I'm getting here, which is fine. Like, I mean, he would have a lot of electric guitars, so like, close enough all right well welcome everybody I'm very excited thank you for the for the for the uh, the cheering the bits smash Matt thank you all right um, if anyone has any questions or concerns or anything you can ask on stream or you can ask in chat and the mods will do their best to help um, and I will do my best to help please be nice to the mods if they tell you that you have spoiled by accident it doesn't mean that anybody is mad at you and we're not gonna smush you with a hammer or anything but we're careful so don't please don't take it personally but do 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 respect what the mods decide all right are we ready are we ready to dive in? Does the screen look okay? Does everything look good? Does everything sound good? Can you hear me over the sound of the sweet guitars? Cause that's important. Cause you gotta be able to hear the sweet guitars, but I'm gonna be talking a lot. We're good? All right. <clears throat> oh no, please don't make this timed. 7.02 PM. Chapter one, 7.02 PM. Must have been unconscious for a while. My head feels fuzzy, kind of like I'm swimming through darkness. When I came to, there was a woman standing there, a woman I don't know. At least I don't think I know her. And then there was a man with a gun. I don't know him either. Well, probably not anyway. Now I'm not the kind of guy who could just stand back and watch a poor woman get shot but I have just one little problem. I'm already dead myself. This has gotta be me, no question about that. After all, do you see any other dead bodies lying around here? I'm literally playing as Johnny Ravro. I'm literally playing, playing, sorry. 
I feel bad for her, sure, but what can I do? I'm dead. But just as I was thinking this, and the guy says, so long, sister. This is no time to be lolling around dead. You're the only one who can save her. Okay. That's a, that's how you that's how you start a game in the middle of action. Like That is that is a beginning. That is an intro sequence. I'm allowing myself one I think category 2 swear. Damn. <laughs> that is an introduction. It's so stylish and stylized and cool and presented so intentionally where it goes from like one side and you're like, I got the scene and the other side, you got the scene. And then it shows your character just a brilliant reveal. Really, really well done. Yes, in media race, um, which basically means starting you in the middle of the action, which is a really great technique. Also, I'm playing like, feel like my initial assessment of Johnny Bravo is not off the mark. But like crossed with Lupin the Third. And the idea of a cross between Johnny Bravo and Lupin the Third is really amazing. <laughs> oh man. All right. So I'm going to have to figure out voices for our main character who has an interesting font. Also, <coughs> sorry, I have to overanalyze everything. This is what I'm doing here. Um, oh, welcome, Jellyfish Lightning. That's a cool name. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is very cool. So this game is highly stylized, and it starts off with a scary, creepy-looking goon threatening a woman with a gun. And this, like, cool, like, sort of, like, 80s, like, synth soundtrack thing playing, like, this could be a very intense and like like starting off like this if they had played it slightly differently or framed it slightly differently could have been like you're about to play a really dark gritty game so our main character who is dead which by the way also contributes to the potential darkness and grittiness um his butt's in the air the decision to have him dead with his butt in the air undermines the darkness with a bit of humor and tells you don't worry this game is not gonna go too far yes there's dead people in it and a ghost apparently and people with guns and bad stuff but it won't go too far because the dead guy's butts in the air <laughs> or at least that is my assessment of the situation if that makes sense So for obvious reasons, um, there may be some parallels that people can draw between Disco Elysium and this game. I will ask for the sake of people not wanting to be spoiled for Disco Elysium that we not discuss that. If you do want to discuss that, I can make a separate place where we can talk about that on Discord. But for now, I'm going to say just let's try to avoid saying things that might be a spoiler for another game. Um, and I'm not, I'm not mocking the butt. I'm pointing out the butt. <laughs> as a narrative device. Someone's gonna put that in the quote bot, aren't they? <sighs> I walked into that one. All right. <clears throat> so. <laughs> anyway. 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 Shall we go ahead and get back into the scene? I promise I will actually explore the scene, but because I have to do dialogue while dialogue is happening on the screen, I can't have feelings about things, so you have to give me a moment to digest it after this. All right. I'm gonna call him like Johnny the Third or like Lupin Bravo at this point. We're just gonna give really dumb names to characters. It's okay. I'm sure that he will get a name of some sort. Um, he kind of does have vibes of Frank Murthbound. I can see that. 
Yeah, I know, Andrew. You know you can count on me <laughs> to not go anywhere fast. But things like home Johnny the Third. There's Johnny Five, who I think is the robot in one of the, the some movie I watched when I was a kid that I liked. Hold on, sorry, I'm having some trouble. I need to get a new arm for my camera. Yes, Johnny Five is alive. Short circuit. Yes, thank you. I'm so glad I can count on you. Um, so I don't think we should call this. So I think we call this guy Johnny the Third. That's gonna get confusing. So I think he might be Loop and Bravo, for now. <laughs> How is that? Can we live with that? I haven't watched Short Circuit in like 30 years, so I've got you beat. It's fine. It's fine. Lu Lupani. <laughs> Lupani Bravo. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you for subscribing, please. Okay. I'm going to get back to the game. Sorry. <clears throat> Johnny Five is alive while Johnny Three is dead. Yes. We got this. Johnny the Third. Huh. All right. But what the? The whole world just changed on me. Okay, I have to point out that the what the is in dark text indicating that it's spoken out loud and the blue in parentheses implies an internal thought. But he's dead, so who can hear him talking? I guess we'll find out. Welcome to the ghost world, the land of the dead. A voice in my head. Who are you? <laughs> no time for introductions now. You have to save her. I know you can do it. All you have to do is use your powers. Huh? Me? Save her? Uh, how? Take a look at your corpse. All right. Do you see that blue flame? That's your soul. And do you see that bright white spot nearby? That's a core. A core? Hmm, just looks like a railway crossing gate to me. Sorry, she got a hmm. Look, the best way to understand is to just try it. First of all, try moving your soul with the directional pad. Next, move your soul across to connect with the core. I really like this, like, VHS tape, like, scrolly, textury, CRT television feel of things going on. Oh, I did it. Congratulations. Your soul has now possessed the crossing gate. to property damage in video games. I really enjoy it. Like smashing pottery, rolling through furniture, all of this is very good. Recently, I had a joke about how there should be a video game in which you're a poltergeist who can like possess things and like do property damage or something like that. Anyway, if we do property damage with the soul of Johnny Bravo Loop in the third, I'm gonna be so happy. <laughs> you can be the property doing the damage. That's amazing. Anyway, I'm pr I pr promise we're gonna play the game properly. I'm just, it's just really, I'm just a goofy Lauren. I'm sorry. I'm just a goofy Lauren. All right. Your soul has now possessed the crossing gate. So what? Now I'm a crossing gate? <clears throat> now then, use the crossing gate to save the woman. What? But how? I love the ka sound. It's very effective. In a moment, time will start. To In a moment, time will start to flow normally again. That will be your chance. Listen, when the man pulls the trigger, the woman dies, right? So before that happens, you have to use your powers to stop it. Oh no, time segments. Hey, wait a second. I still don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you'll see, you'll see. Now then, 
time will start to flow again. Okay. So I said now, and he, he said, like, what? And then he said, hold it, and pulled his gun back. It's gonna be hard for me to remember to read the text on screen while stuff is happening. I will do my best. My apologies for that. All right. Well played. All right, that's my, that's my tutorial voice. I'm gonna have to keep throwing stuff at this goon, aren't I? Also, why is he blue? Is he wearing a mask? Did he paint his face? Are there just blue people in this world? Like, there could be blue people in this world. Also, there's that guitar. I'm really a fan of the guitar. Well played. Uh, what just happened? That was one of your powers at work. A uh, ghost trick. So we're totally, literally playing as a ghost. Oh man, I'm excited. <laughs> I didn't actually think it was gonna be a ghost. But they're literally, you're a ghost who plays tricks on people. It's just that your tricks appear to be stopping crime, which is pretty great. Hi everybody. Well, welcome. I'm gonna just kind of keep blitzing past because there is entirely too much electric guitar for me to not keep the momentum. I'm sorry. It's very cool, okay? Like, this is really good. <laughs> I really like this soundtrack. All right. You mean I made that crossing gate move? Oh man, we're thinking really hard here. That's right. You manipulated that object with the power of the dead, a ghost trick. And all you have to do to perform a trick like that is press A, which is actually B on my controller, so that's fine. I might change that later. Now the woman's fate has changed, albeit just a little. Yeah, she still kind of has a gun pointed at her. Yes. Hmm, that's not good, is it? But at least now you're starting to figure out how to use your powers. So I enter the ghost world with ghost, possess an object, and then perform a trick with it, eh? This game knows what I like. There's a guitar right there. They're like, do you like guitars? And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I really like them, okay? They're really great. It's the best instrument. You might think the best instrument is flute, but you would be wrong. <clears throat> now you're getting it. Let's move on to the next step. I'm sorry. <sighs> Try possessing a different core. I can't reach that one. <gasps> I can strum a guitar. I see. A guitar then, is it? Hey, what do you want from me? I would have preferred that giant wrecking ball. That would solve the problem real quick, I bet. But I guess I can't reach cores that are too far away. We're figuring it out. We're figuring out the gameplay. Fortunately, this character and I are on the case together. Well, I guess we'll see what you can do with that guitar. Let's set time in motion again and find out. Who's there? Does he have a shotgun? That's a lot of holes. <laughs> uh, that's gotta be some of the slowest running away I've ever seen. Dude. He's, okay. If my dead guy just like critiques the life decisions of the living, like as a peanut gallery with me, like I'm, I'm on board. <sighs> hmm. Looks like looks like I'm gonna have to come up with something more. Let's see. What core is close enough to possess from here? I guess all there is is me. 
kind of reanimate my shuffling corpse. Okay. No time to be picky. I've got a woman to save. I like your attitude. It's admirable, truly, but... But what? Which is literally what I was going to say. Thank you. That's a good sign for a good character. If I can manipulate objects, then I ought to be able to manipulate my own corpse, right? Well, tell you what. Why don't you just try it and see? Go ahead and possess your corpse. All right. Now we'll set time in motion. Okay, go ahead and try A. Huh? Nothing's happening. Exactly. Sad but true, I'm afraid. You can only manipulate non-living things. Corpses, even if they aren't alive anymore, aren't really just ordinary things. You gotta be kidding! I'm sorry, this music. I, and this guy's face, I'm I'm sorry, I feel like he's got Johnny Bravo going on. <coughs> like, he's like, I don't know. I don't know, we'll see. You've got to be kidding. Wait, what about the woman? What's happening to her? Let's take a look, shall we? If you want to take a look around, you can move the screen. Move the screen? It's easy. Here, give it a try. Use the directional pad to move it in any direction you want. All right, there's the wrecking ball. How was that? I didn't look in the right place because I wanted to look everywhere where I'm supposed to look. I'm really good at this. Whenever you want to see what's going on somewhere, just move the screen. Okay, I got it. Right now, I want to see what's happening to that woman. He's telling me what I should be doing. Of course. Well, you know what to do then. Move the screen and see if you can find her. Okay, so um, apparently tutorial narrative voice can hear my inner thoughts. That's good to know. Oh, we're in a dump. That's why there's so much stuff around. I get distracted. Oh, I'm supposed to be moving the screen now. Oh, look, I could drop that thing on that goon. This even looks like a beat-em-up location from, like, a 90s beat-em-up, doesn't it? There she is. Well, sister, this is it. Two things are looking pretty dim right now. My eyesight and your future. Did he just kill her? Uh, 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 what? Out of my way. This is really cartoony comic booky. It's done. I'm on my way. In the end, it looks like her fate remains unchanged. So what good are these ghost tricks of mine? But just as I was thinking this... Yeah, it's like, it's really cool and really stylish, but also not afraid to have its characters look completely ridiculous. Okay, that appears to be light possessing things. It does kind of feel like a pic the Pixar lamp, doesn't it? Hello. 
Hello there. How are you feeling? Not very well, I imagine. A terrible tragedy what happened tonight. Dot, dot, dot. Ah, ignoring me, are you? It's a little too early for you to be so stiff and cold, I'd say. Har, 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 har. Ah, so it was you. You were that voice in my head, right? Well, I wouldn't say voice exactly. The dead don't have voices, you see. It's more like my thoughts were being beamed directly into your mind. That's another little trick ghosts can do. Looks like my ghost tricks didn't do much good. She still ended up just as dead as before. That's true for now. For now? Do I get to go back in time and redo things until people don't die? I still have more to teach you about the powers of the dead, your ghost tricks. Who exactly are you anyway? Before I answer that, I think we should save this young lady. Isn't it a shame to see such a pretty young woman lying here like a discarded piece of trash? But what can I do? She's already dead. Time for more ghost lessons for you, my friend. First of all, I'll have you possess me. Possess you, eh? Once you've done that, I'll tell you about another one of your powers. Why am I so determined to save this woman? After all, it's not like I know her. But I guess I'll take the desk lamp up on his invitation anyway. I like that the desk lamp is a person instead of like the ghost possessing the desk lamp. <clears throat> it's fine. My reason is twofold. Number one, I'm not the type to leave women lying around discarded like trash. And number two, I don't have anything else to lose at this point. Okay, this is absolutely, I'm sorry, I feel like this guy is, I feel like it's not an accident that his character design reminds me of these two characters who are, I think, known for being somewhat flirtatious. <clears throat> Trick time! Why? I'm just scoping things out. You can't expect me to do what I'm supposed to do right off the bat. I mean, you can, but you'd be wrong. You know? All right, I guess Lampy, I'll hit the Y button, which is probably actually the X button on this controller. It is. That thought bubble you just pressed, those are your thoughts. What you're saying to yourself in your head. My thoughts, eh? So, the dead don't have voices, and what we think is communicated directly to one another. So these thought bubbles are sort of a stand-in. I think I'm starting to get it. So that that's me that's 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 me talking that's my ability to talk to the lamp I think so too just remember to always keep an eye out for thought bubbles okay good idea I just might get some important clues from them now then in order to possess me you first have to enter the ghost world and LB is your ticket in the best thing to do is try it LB eh guess I'll press it. Okay, well I immediately went to press the button on the right side of the controller because I'm very good at directions. <laughs> Alright, is there anything else I can talk to? Oh, oh, I see. My options are ghost and trick. God, the baseline is so good. Look at that. Door. Traffic sign. Traffic cone. Oh, I can't reach the telephone. That's probably just as well. By the way, have you taken a look at the middle of the screen? What about it? It tells you what trick you can perform with the object you're currently possessing. Folding cot you can unfold. The information is there for you to check out whenever you need it. So, in the case of this folding cot, it looks like I can unfold it. We're gonna be doing that a lot, aren't we? 
All right. <clears throat> and to perform a trick on the object you're possessing, you first have to return to the land of the living. Oh, okay. This time, B is your ticket out of the ghost world, or A, um, on my controller. I, I hold on. Nope. Yeah, that's correct. That's better. Wait. Wait. Okay, yeah. Got it. This time B is your ticket out of the ghost world. Well, good luck. We're counting on you. Huh? Who's this we? Flag. Fan. I can turn it on. I can't do anything with the flag. Oh, wait. Was that the wrong... Hold on. View the controls. Okay, well. Ah! None of these are right, unfortunately. They're like, do you have an Xbox controller? And I'm like, no, I have an 8 feet though. Sorry. Yeah, but it is this way. It is B-A. This is the right one. Well, we'll see what happens. Okay. <clears throat> ah, no. I'm not done! Ah, oh, shoot! Oh, no! I was gonna do some more shenanigans, and it made me progress the plot! Oh, no! No shenanigans. I wanted to do shenanigans. Because you could turn on the fan, and that would do something to the flag, and then the flag would do something. Because the flag can't do a thing, but with the fan on, I bet the flag can do something. <sighs> no, accidental progress, my worst enemy. Huh, that's funny. What is? My corpse and her corpse. Oh, you know, I didn't even notice that. I've got this, like, creepy weird thing happening and she's still got a glowy yellow spot. So I'm dying and she's not. There's definitely something different about the two. There's something emanating from my corpse. That's because you're special. What's that supposed to mean? Not everybody who dies gets special powers, you know. So those waves are because of my powers of the dead, eh? Anyway. Congratulations, you passed. Well, what do you know? What prize do I get? A new power, what else? Another one? Sorry, I don't know enough about these characters' personalities to give them both voices because the disembodied lamp voice is not... I don't have a person at all. So I'm going to have to figure that out. Now, let's review. You can possess objects and manipulate them, right? Now, what do you suppose will happen if you possess a corpse? Well, nothing. You told me that already. Nothing, because I already tried that, remember? And nothing happened at all. Okay. Lauren, maybe you shouldn't answer the questions that the character is asking the other character. The other character is very plainly exactly about to say the answer to. Well, whatever. True, you don't have the ability to manipulate a corpse. But, however, there is something else you can do. Oh, yeah? What's that? 
Why don't you try it and see? <laughs> you butt! <sighs> Alright, I guess we gotta go to ghost mode. Oh, that's a green thing! What's this? Dot dot dot. Can you hear me? Dot dot dot. Wait a minute, what's going on here? Oh, I don't know, Gihas is just chilling in the background. <sighs> hmm, it looks like she's unconscious, poor thing. Unconscious? But she's dead. Yes, but think back. Remember when you died? When you came to your senses, you'd been unconscious too. Unconscious, eh? Come to think of it, the desk lamp was bright. When I came to, I was already dead with my butt in the air. That's not actually in the text. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm ad-libbing here. Let's leave her like this for now. And while she's resting, we can save her life. Oh, sure, you make it sound so easy. And it is easy. When you, when you use your powers on a corpse, you can go back to the past, to a time four minutes before that person's death. Are you serious? Back through time! That's right, but there's a catch. Oh! Oh! Oh, so instead of solving the murder mystery, we have to basically, like, Rube Goldberg invention backwards determine, set up a puzzle thing to make events go just right so the person doesn't die. That's fascinating! What a concept for a game! Wow, okay! That's way more gameplay than I remember Ace Attorney having. No offense, Ace Attorney. <laughs> but it's basically a glorified visual novel. And there's nothing wrong with that. But, you know. It only works on new corpses. Corpses that have been dead for less than one day. And she's still well within that limit. You might want to give it a try before it's too late. But this is crazy! None of it makes any sense! We're talking about the powers of the dead here. It doesn't have to make sense. Now then, let's go, shall we? To the time four minutes before this woman was murdered. Hey, wait a second. I still don't know what you're talking about. It's okay, dude. I figured it out. All right, we've got this. <laughs> you'll see, you'll see. Rewind time. All right, you ready? I played a lot. A Prince of Persia Stands of Time, which involves a lot of time rewinding. Oh, that's why it's got the gears and the clock and the intro thingy! <sighs> that makes sense. And so now I'm going back in time to witness this woman's last four minutes alive. Not as, not as a fuzzy, distant memory of the past, but as a very real, living present. Oh, you know, Blue Glass, I actually knew something about the word for sounding like death in Japanese. That's really clever, though. That's a pun. Good job. What's the name of the studio or the team or the head person or whatever? Like, other than saying, like, Ace Attorney team or Ace Attorney people, who, if I say good job, who am I saying good job to? Because <laughs> I, I don't know that person's name. Shutakami? Shutakumi. Takumi. Shutakumi, I'm sorry. I have to translate it through the fact that I'm actually reading a Japanese name, and that means I can't pronounce it like some random word in English ish. Okay. Yeah, 13 minutes would probably be if this were if this were originating in an English speaking culture, I think 13 minutes would probably be a good equivalent. Because I was wondering, I was like, what would we do? If we didn't have a pun on four, what would we do? 13. My apartment building does not have a 13th floor. It goes from 12 to 14 to penthouse. <laughs> All right. Masakazu Sugimori. Okay. Masakazu. I'm sorry. I do not have a very good accent speaking Japanese, but I will try to say the names as correctly as I can. 
It's the respectful thing to do. All right. 701. It was 702 before. Oh! Wait, did she know me? Wake up! Are you okay? What happened to you? Oh no, he's dead! Who are you? Here's my business card right here, sister. My little golden friend. You did this! You killed him, didn't you? Instead of playing who done it right now, you ought to be more concerned about your own fate. Who are you? Some sort of a hitman? What do you want with me? They said we had to rub out all the last traces of Temsik left in this country. Temsik? What in the world is that? Beats me, I just do what I'm told. All I know is you've got nowhere else to run to. Time to die, sister. As long as that bad boy wrecking ball stays right up there where it belongs. Hint. 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 Look, all I want to know is, who are you? You don't know me and I don't know you. This is just business. These people have watched a lot of movies. So long, sister. Oof, hold it. Who's there? Oh, 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 oh! Those are the things that I did! A shotgun? I was right about that. Because it, 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 the way, when it bursts into the, into the, um, uh, the guitar, instead of seeing just one, like, bullet hole, you have, like, the various pellet holes, um, from the, the shotgun shrapnel. Um, I'm going to be observant-ish, and this game is going to be observant-ish, and we're going to repeat ourselves a lot, so. Did I call? The... <coughs> if I remember correctly, calling the shot actually means- Oh, hey, Trim! Hi, good to see you! If I remember correctly, calling the shot is saying, I'm going to shoot this part, and then you shoot that part. Like, I'm going to shoot the head, and then you shoot the head. I might be wrong. I don't know where I got that from, so... I don't actually know a lot about guns, but I have had people in my life in the past who did know about guns. Or who played video games that had guns. Um, or both. So, I have some knowledge, but this is not from first-hand experience. <clears throat> well, hello and welcome, Trib. Pull up a chair. We haven't gotten very far, but I'm having a good time. Oh, billiards. Okay. Well, I, I have not really played billiards. I think someone tried to teach it to me. And just, I do not have that kind of coordination. This, I need to get a new arm for this. It's having trouble. <laughs> Don't play billiards with a shotgun. Andrew, Andrew, that is some good life advice right there. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> a shotgun? Kind of a flashy weapon for a hitman, don't you think? Not flashy, just thorough. They call me nearsighted Jigo, but I never let my prey get away. <laughs> That's why he said that things are looking dim. Her outlook and his vision. <laughs> That's really great. Ever thought about just buying a pair of glasses? Oh, he's nearsighted. So he can't he can't snipe so he has to have a shotgun that has like a wide area of effect so that he's more likely to hit because he can't see well enough to hit a close precise target but he can sort of get in general proximity that's really funny <laughs> that's this is definitely like weird goon from some tv show sort of stuff <sighs> ever thought about just buying a pair of glasses well, sister, this is it. Two things are looking pretty dim right now. Okay, so I know I have buttons, and I don't know if I can actually hit those buttons right now, or if we have to cycle all the way through this to see it. But we're going to cycle all the way through this to see it, even if we can hit buttons, because I want to do that. 
so that's what we're doing. Two things are looking pretty dim right now. My eyesight and your future. And then he shoots her and then she dies. And there you have it. The last four minutes of her life. Except who knows how many minutes it took me. Because I'm me. Anyway. <laughs> no! It's kind of ironic when you think about it. A woman toyed with by fate and a man toyed with by a ghost. But she still died. Yes, and you can change that with your ghost tricks. Just like you did four minutes ago. Possess and manipulate, eh? Ghost and then trick. And you can rewind these four minutes as many times as you like, too. Now then, are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. All right, we got it, we got it. We got it. You ready to rewind time? Stylishly. So this is four minutes ago, eh? Fine, I get that. But what am I doing way down here? That's just how it works. Her corpse was your gateway into the past, after all. So I've got to make my way from her, from her, okay. So, naturally, your starting point is where her corpse was. And this is where she died. Okay, I get it now. Hop in, then. Trick time. Wrong button. There are only four minutes left before she dies. You'd better try and get to her as fast as you can. There's no time to lose. Who are you? Time is passing. I'm hitting my button. The last seconds of her life are counting down. Looks like I better get up there fast. That's right. Have a look at the right side of the screen. The right side, eh? <laughs> The sand in the top of that timer is how much time she has left. Get to her quickly before all the sand is gone. Ah, I see. Up you go then. Okay, hold on. I'm learning what I can't do, which is a lot of things. <sighs> I don't know what else I can do. Sorry folks, you're gonna have to deal with me being confused here. <clears throat> I can do. Who are 
you some sort of a hitman? What do you want with me? Okay, do you want me... Do you want me to read the dialogue out again when it's being repeated? Or do you want me to just kind of go through it? <clears throat> what is the preference? This is all going to be dialogue we've heard before. It's just telling me where we are in the battle. Not the battle, the puzzle. <clears throat> okay, you guys are all right with me skimming it? Okay, cool. <clears throat> all right, well, I'm going to save my voice because I'm going to be talking plenty myself. Okay. Time is passing. Okay, that's nice of them. Uh-oh, her time is running out. <clears throat> okay. I don't know what that just allowed me to do, but you know what? I don't know what that allowed me to do. What can I do that I couldn't do before? I am really at a loss. <clears throat> okay, Lauren, think calmly. What have we not done? Can't reach up there. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna fail this time. Pretty sure of it. All right. <clears> hey, <throat> okay, hold on. We're gonna look up here and see, is there anything else? Is there something that can hit that string or something to pull that up? I think is what I'm gonna wanna do. But what else do I have to, hold on. We're gonna, okay, unfortunately, we're gonna have to So I can't go back down there. I have no choice in the matter at this point. I have to solve it here. This is the only thing that I can do something with. You've gotta, you've gotta go over there before it blows you over away, but then what? Then what? Then what does that allow you to do? I can't get anywhere here that I couldn't before. Wait. That's gonna do but there we go got it so long sister just a few more steps hopefully I can hope I can make it in time time is passing okay to change her fate. There isn't much time left. This is coming down to a battle of seconds. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually have to swear a little bit in this game. Okay, slight bit of swearing. Okay, <clears throat> I suspect we're not gonna get F-bombs like level one swears, but I think we're gonna get some level two swears, which is fine. I already said one of those, so now we know. Because if it's in the dialogue of the game and I'm gonna be reading it out loud, that means that that swear is gonna happen. So <clears throat> update your expectations accordingly. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, I should put up, I need to make some more covers. In fact, <coughs> I've actually been kind of taking inventory on the songs that I have got um, that I need to finish up and put on YouTube. So there should be some more music going on YouTube soon. Oh man, Final Fantasy VI 
I have to can somebody like I have to let everyone know I posted a chapter of my Final Fantasy VI fanfic after a year. I posted it the other day. So you should uh <clears throat> Oh, see, this art style doesn't quite look like it. Like, I, I guessed this might be a game that was rated T, but I didn't think it'd be worse than T. So, um, all right. Anyway, back to... I'm sorry. I will chat with you folks in a minute. Guys, I feel like this is a, a time when we should probably keep the game going. <laughs> <clears throat> if you'll forgive me. All right. Damn it. What's going on here? Nearsighted Jigo never misses as long as the target is within point blank range. <laughs> Oh my god. Again, they're using they're using humor to keep the fact that this guy is murdering a woman from being too like heavy. It's not even comic relief so much as it's like just it's like having like a helium balloon on a thing that's heavy. It just it keeps it from going all the way down. Looks like you made it just in time. Just barely. Yep, she's still alive. And in that split second, hope was born. Just now, her fate was changed, albeit ever so slightly. Fate changed. She's trying to run away. Oh, you gotta be kidding me! The bridge is up? Trick time. Please don't squish her. Oh! Okay, you can squish him. That's all right. You hear something? Dot, dot, dot. Oh, there we go. And just the Rube Goldberg level of insanity of things going together is wild. Absolutely wild. I love it. Is everyone here familiar with with Rube Goldberg inventions? Because if not, do we get to introduce you to them? It's very exciting. It's very exciting. They're very exciting. All right. <clears throat> How does it feel to save a lady's life? So the danger is gone? Yes, it looks like the danger, in quotes for some reason, Mr. Danger, in fact, rolled away somewhere. You used your powers to avert that woman's fate. So I did all that, huh? You most certainly did. And I knew you could do it. Fate averted. Not just changed. <clears throat> so I lost my life tonight and saved somebody else's life. Oh my god. Are we going to have... Is this going to be like a noir detective narrator voice? Because that'd be great. I would be super excited about that. Yes! Yes! Is the rain falling like bullets? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I... Okay. Have you played Max Payne? It does a wonderful job. It's not a parody. It's kind of a pastiche. I don't know. It's a loving homage slash joking rib ribbing of... Yes. 
Noir detective that chews bubble gum energy. Yeah, I can see that. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> I'm really delighted. <laughs> like, this is very, like, iconically noir. So, like, it's great. It's great. It's good. I love it. God, if I could do a Max Payne voice for him, I would. But unfortunately, I don't think I've got that in me. When I came back to the present, it was raining. I had saved the life of the stranger, now sitting forlornly in the rain. That explains the, 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 um, the choice of diction. Some of the words that they've used are a little bit unusual for a game like this, but they would be completely ordinary in a noir detective novel. And this music, yeah, this is what we're going for here. Even as the story of my life on this planet comes to an end. A stranger, that word strikes a chord and a terrible truth begins to dawn on me. I'm sorry, now that I know that we're going with Noir Detective, you are stuck with Noir Detective voice, Lauren. It's not going away. <laughs> Amazing. I can't recall a thing. Who am I? What is this place? And most important of all, why was I killed? Oh man. Oh right, I'm up here. Your story isn't over yet. Who exactly are you anyway? Just call me Ray of Light. See, it comes down from the heavens and then inhabits a light fixture. <clears throat> As it... I'm sorry. <laughs> See, there's games that don't explain everything to you. <laughs> and then there's Ace Attorney. <laughs> but they managed to do it in a way that's really, like, funny. Like, the joke is the fact that they're explaining the joke to you instead of not, you know? <laughs> Amazing. <clears throat> As an ray of light in the darkness. <laughs> ray, huh? So you aren't gonna tell me your real name, I take it. You haven't told me your name yet either, actually. It's because he doesn't remember it. Which means I get to give him this stupid nickname. <laughs> I... I can't remember. Yes, I guess the memories of the newly departed tend to get a bit confused. Some of us get our memories back. Others never do. But if you ask me, does it really matter? After all, there's only one path left to the dead, and that is to disappear. Disappear? When the sun rises in the morning, I'm afraid you're going to cease to exist. What? Tomorrow morning? But wait a minute. These powers of the dead. Yes? I'd like to use them to save somebody else's life. And whose life might that be? Do you even have to ask? Mine, of course! Yeah, that's clearly where that was going. That's not... <clears throat> not surprising. Ah, I see. But think about it this way. If we could use ghost tricks to save ourselves... Time paradox! Time paradox, time paradox, time paradox! Wouldn't I have tried to save myself as well? I mean, look at me, I'm a desk lamp. That's a good line. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Why a desk lamp, anyway? I'm not really sure myself, to be honest. But in any case, it seems we are unable to use our powers on our own corpses. You're kidding! But you could use your powers on my corpse, right? No. 
You'll only exist in this world until tomorrow morning. I'm afraid that fact can't be changed. This game makes me sad, so I cry when he says goodbye. It's a comedy, but they could still pull that off. Could happen. So there's really no escaping my own death? In the morning, I'm going to cease to exist. Apparently, there's nothing I can do to change that. But just the same, I still want to know. I want to know my story. The lost story of my fate, right up until the time of my death. And until I learn that... You won't be able to rest in peace, right? You can't just interrupt a man's monologue like that, Ray. Jeez. <sighs> Very well. I understand how you feel. You want to go and learn the truth about your death as well you should. I will, but let's see. How should I go about doing that, I wonder? I can't even imagine what the first step would be. This guy's totally used to having his own internal monologue going on. But unfortunately, your friend Ray and I can hear everything you think exactly like you say it. I'm sorry, buddy. The first step? That's easy. You start with her. She's really adorable. The person who witnessed your death. She should have some important clues, don't you think? Hey, you're right. And not only that, she might even know who I am. Yes, I'd say there's a very good possibility of that. What was I doing here tonight in a place like this? That woman probably knows the answer. That's right. Never forget that. She's the key to everything tonight. The key to everything? What do you mean? It's a lot of repeating. I don't feel as bad about the fact that I repeat things that they say or they repeat things I say because they also repeat things that each other says or that they say. Just, just a lot of repetition. It's all good. You'll know soon enough when you regain your memory. Uh, Ray! Ray. That's rude. That's rude. <clears throat> so don't be like Ray, folks. I'm not going to tell you, but I know it's up. So that's an important character. Oh, I love that character, but you don't know why yet. Thanks, Ray. Stop it. That counts as spoiling and vaccinating, Ray. Time out. Time out. We're going to mute you for some time. <laughs> yeah, I'm like a blank sheet of paper right now. Excellent. Give me all of the noir detective metaphors similes i should probably keep some sort of record of everything i learned tonight okay is he gonna do it automatically or am i supposed to do this was this the era where we were supposed to write things down in the books that came with games back when books came with games and games came on games it's been a while oh no ray band oh, that's terrible that's a very good idea. Press left trigger to view a record of what you've learned. Oh, good. Thank goodness. And be sure to check it out now and again. Flavor text. I love flavor text. Memories aren't always the most reliable things after all. You don't say. Oh, spoiler. I have been having major memory issues for several years now. It's really bad. It's fine. It's fine. I can play an amnesiac detective. He and I can figure everything out together. It's great. It's great. It's fine. We got this under control. <clears throat> Updated the phone book. Why is it a phone book? Why is it a phone book? We'll find out. All right, then. I wish you good luck. <laughs> I'm just chilling out here. I mean, I guess in 
like American English, we still have a, like, there's still ways that you show that you're listening, but it's not just by repeating. Like there's certain sounds or certain ways that like, you're expected to respond to things that a person says rather than just sitting there, but it's not usually repetition. So that I hadn't made that direct connection. Okay. Anyway, I'm sorry. The music completely distracted me. Right. There's a game. My camera is in the way of me reading this text. I need to get a new thing for my camera. I'm so sorry. Like, look at that. I push it down. I push it down. This is really annoying. Of the camera. So you're just gonna have to stare at my earthbound pile. Alright. <clears throat> Me, the mystery. I lost my life at a lonely spot on the outskirts of town. I'm trying to regain my lost memory and find out the truth behind my death. My only lead is the red headed woman who witnessed that death. Red headed target. A woman who was at the scene of my death. I don't know her name or anything else about her. She's already been killed once by the hitman, and I saved her with my powers of the dead. Powers of the dead is clearly a phrase. <clears throat> Ray of Light. He calls himself Ray. I don't know who he really is. He taught me the secrets of the powers of the dead. I love his little boogie. Ray is over here grooving to the music, too. Hunter in the Dark. He calls himself Nearsighted Jigo. He's a sniper who carries a golden shotgun. Somebody apparently ordered him to kill the red-headed woman in me, but he's gone now due to an unfortunate accident. Having a golden shotgun is pretty weird. Phone book. Junkyard. The place where I lost... Oh, this must be fast travel. I bet this is fast travel. I bet you can travel through the telephone line to go between locations quickly. <clears throat> The place where I lost my life. It appears to be a junkyard on the outskirts of town. Here I met Ray, who taught me about my powers, and a red-haired woman who might have information about my death. So this is probably going to get updated live as I talk to people and get stuff. Oh, sweet. I need to... Oh, I have a thought bubble. Hold on. No, I'm going to change... Oh, I should save. Continue playing, yes. I'm gonna change the controls here. Yeah. Wait. There we go. Okay. So the the <coughs> see if I can do this. You can hear her sneezing. Okay, I can no longer go down there. I have a think, but I think a talk bubble. All right, talk bubble. I better not let her out of my sight. And besides, I'm not the kind of guy who can just let a woman sit sneezing in the cold rain. Okay, so that explains why he has this phrasing of "I'm not the kind of guy who would do this." Like that's very, it's very cartoony, um, but it also does fit the noir detective type. Especially, I'm not the kind of guy who. I'm not the kind of guy who, who does something minor and potentially harmful about girls. Oh my god. Ah! I'm gonna have to get a new one of these. Okay, well, we're gonna work on that. I think I'll try to move closer. All right, we're gonna see how we do with voice stuff. Bicycle pedal, bicycle shimmy. We're very gently shimmying here. And then we're gonna do this. X. What in the world just happened? The crane moved all by itself and then that big iron ball fell all by itself. 
it started raining all by itself. And then an umbrella came down all by itself. Well, okay, look, honey, the rain is not my doing, but the rest of it. Oh my goodness! Don't tell me I have psychokinetic powers! Obviously. <clears throat> Telekinesis, ma'am. Did she just leave? I gotta get to follow her. Or am I in the umbrella? Maybe I'm in the umbrella. Am I in the umbrella? I think I might be in the umbrella. <gasps> There's a kitty! There's a kitty. There's a kitty. I like cats. The kitty is trying to get her attention. To look at the to look at the dude. <clears throat> Okay, I'm in the umbrella. I could be in the door. I could be in the me. I'm gonna stay here and listen to her. Hmm, looks like she's saying something to herself, but unfortunately I can't hear it from here. That's no problem for ghosts like us as long as your target's not too far away. Just like you do with your own thought bubbles. If you tap the thought bubbles of the living, you can listen in on what they're saying. Maybe I'll just take a little listen then. Always watch for the thought bubbles of the living. They might give you some important clues. <clears throat> but seriously, what in the world just happened? What's this? Some kind of note? I want to see that note. I wonder what I wrote in it. Hopefully it's not just a shopping list or something. Yeah, that wouldn't help. Should I check it out? I should. Did I write this note? Maybe I should give it a read. So you don't remember writing it, eh? No, I don't remember writing it. But even more importantly. <gasps> ding, ding, ding. I didn't get a chance to read that note. Not to interrupt your train of thought, but I wonder if you've realized where this telephone call is coming from. Huh? How would I know that? Think back. Before you helped her avert her fate, didn't the telephone call come in at around this time too? Oh yeah! He said it was something. That telephone call. Exactly. In other words, at this very moment, on the other end of this telephone line, is the culprit who ordered your murder. What? I recommend you possess the telephone. Once you've done that, I'll tell you about another one of your ghost tricks. It's trick time. Ghost. Then I saw him. Right there on the other end of the line, I saw the face of the man who ordered me dead. Oh, he's also blue. Why are the bad guys blue? They're blue. People aren't blue. Is it done? Dot, dot, dot. Speak up, man. Did you get her? Dot, dot, dot. Who is this? Dot, dot, dot. Hmm, yes. A thousand pardons, my dear lady. I must have dialed the wrong number. Ha <laughs> ha Looks like a guy with a Napoleon complex of some sort. <coughs> so that's him, eh? The man who stole my life. That's right. So what do you think? Would you like to go see him? You better believe I would. Then you would do well to listen to me. We ghosts exist by possessing inanimate objects. However... There is one way we can move from place to place over great distances. And that would be... Telephone line. 
the dead can just can jump from point A to point B by moving over phone lines. Say what? I've done all I can do to help you. You'll have to do the rest yourself. You're not coming with me? I'm afraid not. My powers have grown weak. I've already used up most of my remaining strength just to get here tonight. But I had to come to ask for your help. My help? Many mysterious things will happen in this town tonight. I'm trusting in you to get to the bottom of them and find out the truth. You're the only one who can do it. I want you to use your powers of the dead to find this truth. Dot, dot, dot. I'm grateful to you for everything you've done, but I can't promise I'll help. What a noir detective guy. Tomorrow morning, I cease to exist. That doesn't give me a whole lot of time. Oh, so he's, he's not saying that he's not willing to try. He's just saying he can't promise he'll succeed. I need to pursue my own mystery. Find out the truth about myself. Okay, so he is actually not promising to even try. That's more than enough. Huh? If you succeed in doing that, you'll have done what I asked anyway. The two are one and the same. One and the same? Why don't you just tell me who I am if you clearly know so much? Troublemaker. Hmm. This desk lamp blows a whole lot more than he's telling me. Now then, from that call a moment ago, you now have the culprit's telephone number. The rest is all up to you. Junkyard. You got a new phone number. I guess we better go. <laughs> Are you ready? I hope there is some downtime. The music is intense. I'm feeling like everything is very intense. So I'm sorry, my camera's bothering me. All right. <clears throat> you ready? You ready to to cannon travel through telephone? Counts cannon travel. We're gonna go to Napoleon's house. See what his name is. Why is this? It was okay. Oh, we are totally traveling through the information superhighway telephone network. And so the story of the search for myself begins. A story that will last one night only. Tomorrow morning, I will cease to exist. And I'm surprisingly okay with this fact. I have to find the answers before the sun comes up. Why was I killed? And what exactly is going to happen in this town tonight? Alright, I cleared chapter 1. <clears throat> 7.02 to 7.31 p.m. Oh, that's why it's the time. Because we have until like probably like what five in the morning, depending on what time of year and how time works in Japan. If this is in Japan. OK, we obtained a new song four minutes before death. An illustration. Save your current place in time. Yes. No, 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 no. Yes. Hit the wrong button. I will have to save at this next the next opportunity. I have to remember which button is which. <coughs> How time, how, how sunrise and sunset, what that is like. Who am I? Why was I killed? The one who is sure to know the answers to those questions is the man who ordered my murder. The other end of the phone line is the very man who had me killed. Our meeting, it's all so sudden. I'm not sure I'm really prepared for what's to come. Well, no... It's not just time zones, it's also how far north or south you are. The sun in Canada comes up so early I had to get blackout curtains my first summer because it's so much further north than Texas or even than Pennsylvania where I lived before this. Um, so there'll be like birds singing at like 4.30 in the morning, which is not what happens in the summer in Texas. Um, as a result, we also have much shorter days in the winter, but 
yeah, like that varies wildly based on how where you are on the longitude, I think. <clears throat> so it's not even just a time zone thing. Hmm, yes. If what I read in this file is true, why are you guys blue? You're not human if you're blue, I'm pretty sure. <coughs> are they aliens? Is this actually secretly a, a sequel to Maniac Mansion? Are they whatever the blue people in that were? Anyway, the butler is enormous and has a very silly hat. The character designs are so very, very silly. This woman could be quite a bit excuse me, quite a bedeviling bit of trouble for us. She needs to be erased tonight. Confound that nearsighted Jigo. His skills are nearly as feeble as his eyesight. Or as, are as feeble as his eyesight. My brain put a word in there that wasn't there. Not to worry, sir. I have already taken the next step, sir. <laughs> his button's depressed. Oh his screen. He pressed the buttons on his pad and it made the painting turn into a screen that we can see stuff. This, oh my god. I just love it when people are just like, I loved these idiotic things that I watched when I was a kid and I'm going to make something that is just shamelessly like that. It's one of the fun things about Spy Kids was that it was just shamelessly idiotic fun like this. I loved it. <clears throat> yes. But I say, the last thing I ever expected was to talk to the target herself, even if it was only over the telephone. I must admit, my good man, it put me in quite the tizzy there for a moment. <laughs> what is this place? These oddly luxurious furnishings, this oddly refined music, and that odd little machine. I've never seen a room like this before. Oh my god. But one thing's for sure. These people are assassins. I don't know that they're assassins, my dude. I mean, they're having people killed, yes, but they look like they might be more of like a secret military organization trying to take over the world than assassins. And what's more, that red-headed woman is another of their targets. That file the old man has. Maybe it'll give me some information on my redhead. Updated the phone book. So that's true, Johnny Bravo does jump to conclusions. It seems this file contains information about that redhead, but I can't read it when it's closed. Great Scott! Did you see that? The file, I say. The file reared up and snapped at me, my good man. Nearly bit my head off. Not to worry, sir. I've already seen to it that the target, Miss Lynn, is no longer a threat, sir. Lynn, okay. Bah! That's not what I'm talking about, man! Hmm, Lynn, is it? So that's her name, is it? But this file, it's like it's written in a foreign language. I can't read it at all. That's because they're not human. I guess. Because they're blue. I don't know. Might I suggest putting away the file and relaxing, sir? Look at this. This guy has a chin. This is a serious chin action we've got going on here. Now, I don't know that it's that they're foreigners. I think they might be from another planet. <laughs> <clears throat> So they have weird alien Rube Goldberg ways of doing things by pressing buttons. I see. I see. You have a very important job ahead of you tonight, sir. 
file. I can't do anything. All right. Well, I think I might have missed some dialogue there. <clears throat> I'm just gonna have to deal with the fact that I haven't figured out how that works. All right. I have some thoughts. Darn. This is a pickle. The phone and I got put away neatly. And the only thing I've learned is the name Lynn. This sure is a weird room. I traveled through the phone line to get here. But where exactly is here? And who exactly are these people? This seems to be the only thing I can do, so... trying to give me a case of the vapors my apologies sir but I did not touch it sir there's a lot of sirs happening here it appears the equipment is still malfunctioning sir bah granted technology is certainly a convenient thing but our use of it is just plain off confound it hmm yes in any case I don't wish to see the face of our current target my good man as you wish sir in that ca case, might I suggest this, sir? Oh, he smacks it for good measure. Ah, look at that! That's me! Look at my Johnny Bravo! You can't tell me they weren't inspired by Johnny Bravo's design. I mean, you can tell me, but I don't know that I'd believe you. Hey, that's... Hmm, yes. Sissel. If all goes well with our deal tonight. We will have the power to change the world, sir. Hmm, yes. It's a very important night indeed, my good man. We can't afford to make mistakes. And that is why we can't afford to trust that Sissel. No, we must be very careful. Sissel. That must be my name. Now that I hear it, it does sound familiar. A deal, eh? What could that be all about? Just what exactly was I up to, I wonder? Was I secretly a bad guy? That would be interesting. I have to make good on the bad that I did. I could do that. We are completely prepared for tonight, sir. Hmm, yes. Now all we have to do is pluck the fruit of success. Ha 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 ha. One thing's clear. These villains seem to know me. And another thing. There seems to be some kind of connection between me and this Lynn. Why else would our names both come up here like this? I wonder if Ray is actually like me from the future but more future coming back to tell me how things work. Possible. All right, I can go to the lamp. There's just not a lot I can do here. I can operate the projector again and the guy's gonna get mad at me, it'll be great. I wanna get to his fruit bowl. I wanna haunt his fruit bowl. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and operate this again. Where is your head, man? I told you I don't wish to see this face. My apologies, sir. It appears to be another malfunction, sir. Well, get it fixed, man, unless you want to see me malfunction. Certainly, sir. Can I just... These guys murdered me, and now they're targeting the redhead. What kind of connection did we have with each other? Spinning this painting around makes the old man's head spin, but that's about it. I've got to find the right timing and get beyond this projector. What I need tonight is a way to flip this situation around. Hint! 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 All right, Cecil, you're allowed to backseat. You are the main character. 
I don't think that counts as backseating. Oh, amazing, amazing. All right. <clears throat> So what are they, tr what, if I am Sissel, which I'm not entirely sure if I am Sissel, because they're talking about Sissel as though Sissel had to do with the deal, and whether they know that like a dead man did a deal. Like it's possible that I did the deal and they don't know whether they could, could have trusted me, but I'm dead now. Um, like basically what I'm saying is the way that they're describing whether they can trust Sissel or not, does not sound like the way you would talk about a person you had killed. There would be extra dialogue in there, I would expect. There would be extra dialogue in there that would be like, well, good thing he's dead. I hope he didn't screw it up because he's dead, whatever he was supposed to do for us. You know, like there's this, um, th there would be something kind of past tense or recognizing that. So I don't know if I am Sissel or if Sissel was the person who was supposed to kill me, for example, um, who's maybe not the same as the guy who killed the redheaded girl. Like there may, th these may have been t two different murders by different murderers. We don't, don't know whether my body is rid riddled with shotgun shells. Nobody said that. Um, so something isn't quite fitting right here. Like it's possible that they, it's possible that they don't know that I'm dead. It's possible that they, that they are talking about somebody else who isn't me and my main character is mistakenly, because he said that name seems familiar, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that name refers to me. That could have been like my partner who double time, double crossed me and, uh, and, uh, and betrayed me and is the reason why I'm dead. And maybe they made a deal with my partner or something like that. Like, like that could have happened. And Sissel would still be a name that was recognized. And that would be a nice twist where you could, you could just take it at face value and be like, well, the game told me my name is Sissel. So I guess my name is Sissel and you just run with it. Um, and that's a perfectly valid way to think about things. Um, but, uh, something doesn't feel right. So we'll see. We'll see. Sorry, you're gonna have to deal with me speculating about things. That's what we're gonna do. All right, so we're gonna try to operate this and see. There we go, painting. That's what I want. Okay, so there. Okay, there we go. We got it. We got it. Okay, now I can be in his fruit. That's probably not what I want. <laughs> the control panel is probably more what I want. All right, let's try this. It's a miserable state of affairs when I can even be startled by a telephone that doesn't even ring. Egad! This guy should have a British accent, but I can't do those, so you're stuck with this. It's even more pathetic to be startled by the same telephone twice! Bah! The problem must be solved, sir. The Miss Lynn problem, sir. What? Lynn? Hmm, yes. You did mention taking a next step a moment ago, didn't you, my good man? Yes, sir. I sent one step ahead Tango to her apartment, sir. Oh my god. They all have stupid nicknames. That's amazing. That telephone call must be him reporting in, sir. Am I gonna have to go to the scene of her murder, specifically her murder, not other people's murder, her murder, again and again and again. Each time they send one of their goons after her, I then have to go, then catch up with the goon and see her dead and then go back four minutes earlier and save her from that goon. We'll find out. Right now, it is feeling like that might be the case, which is really funny. Very good, very good. Lynn is in danger again.
Oh, he just looks exactly the same as the other guy. But he's got, he's got, I don't know. He's got glasses. Does the other guy have glasses? The other guy didn't have glasses. That was his whole thing. Oh man. This is one step ahead, Tango. I'm at the Target's apartment now. And? Out with it, man! Have you taken care of her? No, she isn't back yet. What? It only stands to reason. If the Target got here first, they wouldn't call me one step ahead now, would they? Oh my god. Okay, so the other guy didn't have glasses. Okay, I didn't think so because they talked about him being nearsighted and the girl told him to get glasses. Lynn, I suppose we know her name. I can start calling her by her name. So, <clears throat> amazing. Are all the goons gonna be identical with different accessories? This is amazing. That would be really funny if they all have stupid names and different accessories. Dot, dot, dot. I don't get it. But in any case, man, once you've taken care of her, then you'll promote me to the head of the Hitman division. <laughs> See, they're not just assassins. They're an evil corporation. The worst form of evil of all. Capitalism. All right. Bah! No, man. Now you're even getting one step ahead of me. We can discuss my new salary later. <laughs> Amazing. Great, Scott! Now you're even getting one step ahead of your last one step ahead. I'll get back to my job now, sir. Confound it! You're even hanging up one step ahead. Trace completed. Lynn's apartment. What did he say, sir? He asked me to raise his salary. What will you do, sir? Maybe I'll give him some of nearsighted Jigo's pay. Lynn, I can't lose her. She's my only lead if I ever hope to solve the mystery of me. There's Excellent, all right. These are gonna just keep updating all the time, which means I'm gonna keep checking them as often as I remember that they exist. So like, look forward to that. <laughs> all right. I lost my life in a lonely spot on the outskirts of town. My name is Sissel. I think there's a connection between me and Lynn who witnessed my death. I was apparently trying to make a deal with a mysterious old man tonight. Or so we think. I'm not so sure that you should come to the conclusion that you are Sissel, sir. Something's not right here. Redheaded targets. A woman who is at the scene of my death. Her name's Lynn. She's already been killed once by the hitman. Oh my god. If they upgrade that to that, she's been killed twice by the hitman. She's been killed three times by the hitman. Like that. It'd be really funny. I'm very, really amused. Ray. Okay, there's nothing. I don't think there's anything new on Ray. Hunter in the dark. He calls himself nearsighted Jigo. Yeah. Okay, this yeah, this doesn't seem new. Eyebrowed villain. He's probably the culprit behind my death and Lynn's death too, but his motives are unknown capitalism. Apparently he's planning to call, carry out a deal with me tonight, but I don't know the details. Bye, Ufus. Well, thanks for joining. I will definitely try to post this up tomorrow morning so you can catch it on YouTube. Masked muscle man. Oh, I guess he is a muscle man, isn't he? He appears to be the old man's servant. He operates the machines in the strange room expertly. The other hitman. He's a hitman who, on the old man's orders, is targeting Lin. His name is One Step Ahead Tango. He's nearsighted Jigo's rival. He arrived at Lin's apartment early and is now waiting for his prey to come home. Oh, he's actually got a proper sniper rifle. Look, she appears to have an aquarium. Neatly placed shoes. Neatly placed umbrellas. Everything is hung up neatly. All right. Oh, oh. Heaven and hell, okay. Right, I should know heaven because Tengoku, I should know that. Because the Tenkai star is the star of something of heaven. 
which I can't believe. This is proof that my brain is not working and my memory is bad. I'm forgetting things from Suikoden. It's very sad for me. All right, well, we did pretty well there. Phone book. <clears throat> the place where I lost my life. It appears to be a junkyard on the outskirts of town. Here I met Ray, who taught me about my powers, and Lynn, who might have information about my death. They really will update this a lot. That's, that's good to note. Lynn's apartment. Lynn's home. A hitman is waiting here, sent by the mysterious old man. Luxurious parlor. A mysterious room. The mysterious old man who stole my life and his equally mysterious underling are hanging out here. The room appears to be equipped with many mysterious devices. Like, I just, I love the, like, the repetition. Repetition can be a really fun literary device that you use for purple prose, which I'm prone to, and noir detectives can have their moments as well. Um, but if you do it like this, it kind of becomes dumb, but like intentional tongue-in-cheek dumb, and I appreciate that. So it's very mysterious. Let's... Shall we travel to Lynn's apartment? Let's stop listening to the pretentious flute. That's how you know it's fancy. The logbook is pretty great. I appreciate games having things like that, and I appreciate games having things like that that get updated regularly. I'm sorry, I'm just grooving to the music. All right, I'm gonna do this. <clears throat> okay, Lynn's apartment. I hit the wrong button. Just need to remember that it's the yes button. That is yes. Traveling through the telephone. Oh. Oh, what? What? No! What? You did not just kill the dog! You did not just murder a dog! The telephone line guided me to Lynn's apartment. Fortunately, Lynn isn't here yet, but unfortunately, the hitman is. So he just killed the dog. Like, it could just be sleeping. It is possible that our pups there is just snoozing with all legs in the air and no dignity. Which is a thing that a dog would do. However, there is a hitman with a silent sniper rifle sitting with his gun, just chilling. So, also, we need a dead body in order to be able to travel back through time. <coughs> and I guess it's not going to be Lynn. I guess it's going to be her pups, who is a cute fluff. And there are a couple of other unfortunate little developments waiting for me, it seems. Should be a comma after me. Sorry. <gasps> Is that a little girl or like a robot girl? It's hard to tell, she's wiggling weird. I'm assuming that must be like Lynn's little sister or something. Hmm. It looks like there's an unlucky little lady here tonight. <coughs> it's Christmas. Did you see? It's Christmas. They've got Christmas decorations. And an even unluckier little doggy. The poor, brave little warrior. I'm glad to know that Sissel question mark respects dogs. He must have been trying to defend his mistress. If Lynn came home now do something about the situation and fast. Trick time! Ghost time. So there's an umbrella that I can extend. There's a door that I can open or most importantly there is a dog. More to the point, who am I? Who am I? Uh, are you talking to me? Of course! Do you see anybody else around here? If I remember right, the dead don't have voices. Their thoughts reach the other person directly. 
I guess that explains why this dog is talking to me right now. This is your mistress's apartment, and you are presumably the little doggy who died here. Just the fact that he calls him a doggy, not a little dog, but a little doggy. This is very good. I very much appreciate that. He's a cute pup. Died? So I'm dead, huh? Let's see. The dead lose their memories. They even forget what they look like. And so that's what this blue flame shape is all about. Oh! <clears throat> oh my god, that's really cute. There's no time to lose! Miss Camilla! My Miss Camilla is in trouble! Gasp. You mean you remember? You know who you are. Don't underestimate the dedication and devotion of a puppy. That's right. I'm Missile. Nice to meet you. I'm sorry. Missile's voice. <laughs> I'm just trying to settle in. It was originally going to be like, I guess, kind of cutesy like Nika, but it's too intense and serious and heroic. I'm a Pomeranian. Well, I guess now I know it's possible for the dead to regain their memories. Thanks to this little doggy. Miss Camilla! Miss Camilla! My Miss Camilla is in trouble, and I vow to devote my life to protecting her! Oh my god, this is really cute. But I died before I could rescue her! How could I let her down like this? So you're more worried about your mistress's safety than your own death, eh? I like your moxie, little doggy. Looks like it's time to go back to four minutes before this little guy's death. Time to save him. I'm sorry, I cannot say anything. <clears throat> there is a typo on the screen. And because this game is silly, I'm going to roll with it. Time to save this his life. All right, <clears throat> are you ready to save this his life? Dated the phone book. They're letting you know that we put him in the book. Rewind time. Well, I don't have any other options now, do I? Maison de Amida. Let's see. First of all, I'd better see what I can find out about your death, little guy. Excuse me, but where exactly are we? Huh? You followed me? Or you followed me? I followed you! You brought me with you, one or the other. Hmm, it looks like the dead can move around together. This is good to know. I wonder what we will be doing with this for some major plot point potentially involving Ray later on. We'll see. <clears throat> this is the land of four minutes before your death. Really? We're really here. So that means you're going to save Miss Camilla, doesn't it? Aren't you even surprised? I mean, we just traveled through time and... Not especially. I mean, Miss Camilla can walk around on two legs, but I can't do that. So if she can do that, then it's not so strange that you can walk backwards through time. <laughs> Impeccable logic. Thank you, Missile. So that's the way your mind works, hey? I guess that's reasonable enough. We're all on the same page. Come on, come on, let's get started. Okay, first we watch your last four minutes unfold. Then we use what we learned to save Camilla. Just like when I saved Lynn at the junkyard. If we watch closely, we ought to be able to get a few leads. Keep your eyes open. This guy's definitely a detective of some sort because he keeps using the word leads. Non-detectives don't do that. <clears throat> of course! Leave it to me to sniff out a few clues. I'm sorry. But have you ever met a Pomeranian? <laughs> <clears throat> Oh, she's hiding. She's looking under the bed. Oh. oh, she got something out from under the couch. Yippee! Found the remote! Oh my god, the dog. The dog is barking at Santa. 
That's a fancy lady. Shut that mud up! The dog... Does the dog have multiple tails? No, Missile, you're not supposed to bark. The lady next door is crabbier than ever tonight. If it barks again, I'll knock this wall down. You don't want her to knock the wall down, do you, boy? Why do you like to bark so much, anyway? You sure are cute, but just don't get us killed, okay? Darn, I really wanted to watch TV, too. Hey, I know! I'll listen to music. He looks like he's got multiple tails, and I'm not sure if that's just to communicate how much he's wagging his tail, or if he's like a nine tag. So she says, oops, Whew, that was close. So she won't hear stuff that's going on, she's got her music. I'm in the mood for donuts tonight. Doggy, there's a donut on the floor. There's a rat in your apartment? Doggy's gonna save the day. Oh, shoot. Wait, is Missile missing a leg? Oh, knock this wall down! No, I think he's got all four. Yeah, he's got all four. Okay. Oh, Missile! Hmm, I don't really like it when jobs outside the original scope crop up. See, it's funny... Because, like, the scope of an assignment is, like, what does the assignment include? But also, a scope is a part of a gun. Specifically a part of a gun that is, that he has. This man is using a sniper rifle with a scope on it. <clears throat> that is, there is no way that is not intentional. I remember enough about Ace Attorney. I know. I know that's like all throughout everything they do. <clears throat> so there we go. <laughs> I have to put it down as a separate charge and accounting never likes that. But I guess it can't be helped. Sorry, kid. So that's the whole dramatic story of what happened four, be four minutes before you died. Wow, look at that! I'm dead! I'm kind of shocked to tell the truth! Okay, let's get started on saving her! But let's see, how are we gonna do this? It seems to me the easiest way would be for you to take a big bite out of that man's leg. Oh, I don't think I could do that! Whenever somebody I don't know comes around, all I want to say to them is, Welcome! Oh, 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 baby. <laughs> I can't help it! Okay then, I guess the only thing we can do is get the little lady to help herself somehow. Oh, I don't think she could do that! Did you notice her putting those red things on her head? Red things? Oh, you mean the headphones. Whenever she puts those red things on, that's it! I can call her name until my throat is sore, but she never hears me. To be perfectly honest, I hate those red things! Hmm, you're right. With those headphones on, our little lady doesn't even hear the sound of the intruder's gun. So maybe that's our first lead. Now we know we have to do something about that. We have to we have to make it so she actually drops them into the water so she can't put them on. You ready? I need to save, actually. Can I save? I can save. Yes, because I didn't save last time. Continue playing, yes. Okay, I'm going to go, I can go to the telephone. Well, can't really change the little lady's fate by just standing around watching. That intruder in black will be entering this room in just four short minutes. And my ghost tricks can only get me so far. If I want to save the little lady, I'm going to have to get her cooperation. And the first step to get rid of any is to get rid of anything that might get in her way. Oh, so 
so close! You almost knocked those red things down! Hey, I think you're some onto something there. If we drop them in the fish tank, Camila won't be able to use them anymore. But if we drop them in the fish tank, Miss Camila will get a scolding from Miss Lynn. All you have to do is pretend it was your fault. That's the way of the honorable warrior. <laughs> this dog are on the same wavelength. Okay, but you've obviously never seen Miss Lynn when she gets mad. Shut that mud up! I'm doing the wrong button, sorry. You don't want her to knock the wall down, do you, boy? Oh, right. This is, we've all just seen this dialogue. Okay, I see. headphones too. Maybe keeping expensive electronics over your fish tank is not a good idea. Just an idea. How about if we tell her you did it, Missile? Darn, now I can't even listen to music either. I think the gods are playing tricks on me tonight. Forgive me, Miss Camilla. I'm only doing it to save you. So what? Now you think you're one of the gods, eh? Huh? No. Never mind that. The important thing is, we managed to change the situation. That's true. At least now we can use the little lady's ears to help us. <clears throat> Fate changed. I'm not sure what else I can do. Okay, she's got her donuts. I'm gonna be able to do something with her donuts. Let's go. The question is, what do we do now? Unless we do something more, the outcome will still be the same. Oh, if only I had big, strong teeth and an aggressive spirit. You know who has big, strong teeth and an aggressive spirit? The lady on the other side of the wall. <laughs> she will absolutely chase this man down. Doesn't seem like we can stop the hitman from coming in. So in that case... Oh, I have an idea. Why don't we hide Miss Camilla? Hide, huh? That sounds like just the kind of idea a little doggy would come up with. Are you making fun of me? Where could a little lady hide in this room? Hmm, I think I might ju have just the place. But there's just one little problem. How to get Miss Camilla in there, right? Exactly. If I could possess Camilla herself, the answer would be easy. But I can't do that, so I guess the only way to do it is to lead her there. See, lead, lead. We use the word lead a lot because we're a detective. Now, what can I do using the objects in this room? I think I'll try out various things and see what I can come up with. And I'll be here watching, cheering you on. Amazing. Okay. So I can do the... Oh, I can rock the bowl can rotate the Santa ornament faster. I can play the star ornament. Okay, I'm gonna have to rotate it faster to do more. Shut that mud up!
Okay, here we go. Missile, no! What are you doing under here, you silly boy? Oh, my little missile. You're always doing the cutest things. Nobody's here, eh? My prey is bound to come home sometime. Might as well make myself comfortable in the meantime. <laughs> he gets his gun to eat, to eat the donut! Amazing. He used his gun to eat the donut. <laughs> I'm sorry. There's some guitars. This is my reward. Use electric guitar. Oh, I guess I just kind of followed around with, I thought we were gonna get the neighbor to knock down the door. Um, but I was just kind of like saying like, obviously the spinny thing, we're gonna have to spin on it. So we're gonna have to speed it up and then see, once we get on the other side, we're gonna be, we're gonna have to be on the other side to produce something. So as soon as I got to the other side, I was like, where can I go from here? And then I just kind of followed a bunch of stuff. But it was, I was mostly just messing around. <laughs> There, our little lady's fate has been averted. It has? The poor thing is still curled up in a ball and shaking with fear. Well, yeah, that's true. But that's not so bad. In the scheme of things, I'd say she'd just fine. And look, you're not dead. Oh, you're right! We did it! We did it, didn't we? We did it! Well, to be precise, you're the one who did it. Huh? Me? I... Saved, Miss Camilla? Yup. You're the one who led her under the sofa, right? This is the wrong form of the word, led. You're the one who lead her under the sofa, right? <laughs> I'm just gonna keep doing that. I do it with affection in my heart. You protected your mistress. I can attest to that. Oh! Oh, thank you! Fate averted. Can I ask a question? Sure, what is it? What exactly are those strange powers of yours? Oh, you mean my ghost tricks. Apparently, they're the power to manipulate inanimate objects. If they're ghost tricks, then can I do them too? I'm dead too, after all. Uh, I guess that's how it goes, right? I've been staring at those donuts as hard as I could for a long time now, but they won't budge for me. Why do you suppose that is? I don't really know. I guess you just don't have that power. Well, I have one thing to say to that. That's not fair. <laughs> I told you, the sillier a roll is, the easier it is for me to get into it. Sorry, but I guess not everybody who dies gets the powers of the dead. That's literally what Ray said. It's fine. It's fine. It's clear that Mr. Sissel question mark. He may be a big brain, but he's not entirely a big brain. You know what I mean? So. So what's going to happen to me now? Nothing really, your death has been erased. You'll just go back to being a happy little doggy living your everyday life. I guess this means goodbye. But we'll meet again sometime, right? Yeah, maybe if you die again. What you did for me tonight? I'll never forget it. We can just Im imagine intense, serious doggy eyebrows on this portrait right here. <laughs> well, I guess we'd better be getting back to the present. Putting things like that in quotes just makes them sound sillier. So I'm going to say them with, like they've got quotes. Because this game is very silly. I hope that's okay with you. <clears throat> also electric guitars. Time to see what happens next in our story. <laughs> see? See? You see what I mean? <laughs> oh. oh man. Oh that's good.
good. That's pretty good. I like that. I approve of that. And now a new present is born. See, it's funny because we're talking about the timing of past, present, and future, but also it's Christmas. <laughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> The little lady is still curled up in a ball and shaking with fear. And the little doggy is wagging his tail happily. So what am I going to do now? I think I'll watch for a while and see what happens. Oh my God, the <laughs> what? Still at the junkyard. All right, got it. I'm on my way. Huh, I guess my prey likes to play hide and seek. She hasn't had enough of that junkyard yet, apparently. I can't let nearsighted Jigo beat me out on this one. I'd better hurry. Oh my god, are the goons going to take each other out? Maybe. That dog definitely has multiple tails. What was that all about? You saved me, didn't you, Missile? I just know you did. Maybe I shouldn't answer it. <clears throat> Squish doesn't mean dead, necessarily. Lynn! Trick time. Time to get into that phone. Oh shoot, I forgot. Yes, 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 I know. What? That did not work, okay. <clears throat> There's that little doggy all curled up on the floor, dreaming away the life we worked so hard to get back for him. That's fine, but what's up with that core? The dead can't possess living creatures. That's one of the rules Mr. Desklamp taught me. Sorry, Ray. <laughs> he does not get dignity. He's Mr. Desklamp. <clears throat> Good night, Blade Tiger. I'm glad you could join while you could. And welcome back, Decca. So what would a living and breathing doggy be doing with a core? I'd better try possessing him and see that's a good idea. <coughs> oh, it's you! It's you! It's... Hmm. Come to think of it, I never did ask you your name. I guess it's good we ran into each other again then. This is a good chance for us to reintroduce ourselves to each other. You mean you forgot my name already? After everything we shared together, the drama, that terrible goodbye, I missile. The song had better be named I missile. This this song has Earthbound vibes. I'm sorry. At least to me. And then like Elena Rain style, like we'll have like a synth solo type thing going on. <clears throat> but you know, it's strange. I wonder why you remember me now that you're alive again. Do you remember your time being dead? Of course, all of it. Okay, let me get this straight. The memory of being dead doesn't disappear. <clears throat> Does that mean that Lynn remembers being dead? The dead I meet in the ghost world develop a core when they return to the land of the living. And if I then possess that core, I can talk to that person. It looks that way, yes! I appreciate that Missile is a person to him. Hmph, <laughs> that Camila, it never fails. What never fails? Every time she gets on that black hello, she talks and talks and forgets all about me. Oh my god. The telephone is called a hello. <laughs> Excuse me, a hello? <laughs> also known as Ness's dad. <clears throat> Amazing. 
No matter how much I run around and show off, she never even glances at me. So that was you showing off, eh? Well, I would like to hear what the ladies are talking about. Oh, so would I! <clears throat> A call from Lynn, eh? It sounds serious. I wonder what they're saying. I'd better go possess that phone and listen in. It's a good idea. Time to possess that phone. Let's see if this works. Camila! Oh, thank goodness you're okay! Well, I don't know if I'm okay exactly. You won't believe what just happened! Listen to me! You've got to get out of there right now! But what about dinner? I was thinking about spaghetti tonight! I won't be going back there for a while, and you might be in danger if you stay there too! But I already was in danger! Just a little while ago! Meet me at that restaurant, the Chicken Kitchen, on Dead End Drive! Okay. <clears throat> This is fun. This is super fun. Because Chicken Kitchen is a plausible name for a restaurant. Because you eat chicken as a kind of meat, and kitchen is a place that prepares meat or prepares food, so that makes sense. But <clears throat> the uh there's probably a word for the literary term of having like in like inverse consonants happening chicken kitchen 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 chicken 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 like it's very clever i'm really curious what this is called in japanese because it was probably also really fun wordplay and these translators are insanely good being able to translate or localize a pun is really hard like that's just that's really challenging and coming up with the perfect wordplay to convey that there is wordplay in the original. When English does not have nearly as much of a tendency towards wordplay as Japanese does, like, that's fantastic. <clears throat> On Dead End Drive. Oh, that sounds like bad news. Dead End Drive? I don't know. That's pretty far. Just hurry, okay? Oh, and one more thing. Bring the music box with you, okay? Music box? I love music boxes. Is it a present for me? I'm sorry, but it doesn't play. I can't even get the lid open. And you can't very well call it a music box, then can you? More like just box. <laughs> just bring it, okay? It's kind of big and it's made out of wood. Okay, I will. Where is it? I kind of hid it in that room you're in. Excuse me. Oh, now the phone is in. Okay, so there's a weird guy with a bird on his head. And this, just don't have your technology near the aquarium. Oh my god. <clears throat> Darn. Now I've dropped the phone in there too. How about if we tell her you did it, Missile? But I sure hope Lynn's alright. I better get going. I know right where Dead End Drive is. But I never saw any music box around here. Where am I supposed to find it? Do you know where it is, Missile? Help me look, okay? All right, <clears throat> time for me to find it. All right, Lynn. After she phoned the little girl in her apartment, I lost track of her. The hitman is after her again. The other hitman. Upon hearing that Lynn was still at the junkyard, he headed there at once. The little lady. Her name is Camila. Over the phone, Lynn asked her to find the music box hidden in the apartment and to bring it to the restaurant. Valiant pet. His name is Missile. He was killed by a hitman while trying to protect his little mistress. He's a loyal little doggy. I really have no idea where it might be. Hmm. 
it looks like the tree is getting impatient for Christmas too. <laughs> Wouldn't it be cute if that's what the tree was really thinking? But seriously, maybe the pug's not in right. Just what I need. One more thing to make Missile Bark. Alright. <clears throat> we're gonna go in here. We're gonna go down here. And then we're gonna go here. And we're gonna try to open this. That doesn't appear to be it. Donuts, okay. How do I get up there? There's got to be a way to get up there. Because you see it up, it's up there, that thing right there, but I can't get to it. That is nice of them to tell you when you've already heard the dialogue that she's thinking. Ah, here we go. Here we go. Got it. I got it! I got it! She's like, wait a minute. This is it! The music box! Yippee! And then she just puts it into her space. I'll leave the remote here. But don't you touch it, Missile. If the TV comes on, you'll start barking. I'd hate to find you flattened underneath that wall when I came home. Why don't you just take him with you? Okay, I'm leaving now, Missile. I have to go help Lynn. She's like a sister to me, you know. Okay, so they're not actually sisters. I thought they might actually be sisters. I wonder what their relationship is then. That's interesting. Very mysterious. <clears throat> you be good while I'm away. And no barking. God, the guitars are so good. I love them. I love guitars. Oh, doggy. Like, I'm sorry, but the dog has four tails. Still no peace for the little lady. And the redhead Lynn is facing a new crisis right now as well. Meanwhile, I'm in a bit of pickle of my own. With the receiver at the bottom of the fish tank, I find myself still trapped in this apartment. Why didn't you ride in the music box? <clears throat> Too bad I can't just curl up and go to sleep with my tail wagging too, because there is something I must do question is, how do I go about getting out of here? I don't know, but I've got some sweet guitars to listen to while I do it. Got an illustration. We cleared chapter two. We got some music. I can save my data and continue playing. Chapter three, 8.04 p.m. This music's really good. Once again, Lynn is in danger, and I think she knows it too. I sincerely doubt she'll be coming back to this apartment tonight. She and I are connected to each other somehow. She's my only lead and I can't lose her. I have to get to her and fast. Where am I? With the telephone in this apartment being out of service, my only hope of escape is to find another telephone. No Mr. Desk Lamp here. The only friend I have to talk to is 
That nice little doggy curled up there on the floor. Ah. I could make the dog so mad that the lady knocks down the door. Which may actually be what I'm supposed to do here. I did just save, so we're gonna try this. Hopefully I don't get the dog killed. I'll knock this wall down! If you keep that racket up, I'll bring this whole dilapidated building down on you. So this establishes that she has a phone. Did you hear what I just heard? You mean the lady next door's angry howl? No, forget that. It was the sound of a telephone ringing coming from the apartment next door. Ooh, yes, I am on the right track. Oh, I get it. You're thinking about borrowing her telephone, aren't you? But how are you going to do that without breaking the wall down? Well, the lady next door is kindly offering to do it for us. <laughs> I suppose that's true. Yes, but she's mostly hoping to crush me underneath it. Two things are certain. There's a telephone in the apartment next door, and I have to create a path to get there somehow. Should I keep barking? If you keep that up, I'll knock this wall down. If she's true to her word, we might be able to change the situation. I just want to avoid the whole getting crushed part, though, if you don't mind. I have to do something to change the situation. If I can create just a little more racket somehow. Oh, got it. I'll pound this wall open. Amazing. The dog is running. Good job, run. Wait, is the dog dead? I told you, didn't I? I told you I would knock the wall down on you. So this is what it feels like to have a wall knocked down on you, huh? It's more like she knocked you out through the wall, really. I'm still alive, aren't I? I don't know. You are. But the TV and star ornament aren't. I'll never bark again, not as long as I live. But wait a minute. It looks like all that commotion wasn't for naught. Huh? Your barking made her create a path for me. It did? But the wall is still standing just like before. Yeah, but I'm dead. <laughs> I can phase through things, apparently. Now we know. But there are paths only the dead can see. Oh, those kinds of paths! Yes, obviously. Trick time! So you're leaving, huh? I guess so. You're going to go save Miss Camila and Miss Lynn? I have to follow my own mystery first and foremost. That means everything to me. But you will save them, right? If it helps me along my way, then yes. Yeah, he's going to. I don't have any powers of the dead. I'm not even dead, actually. But I'm going to find a way to go help Miss Camilla, too. We create our own paths, right, Missile? That's right. Okay, I'm leaving now. Guess this is our second goodbye. It is, isn't it? My name is Sissel. Missile is Sissel. Maybe that is his real name, actually. <laughs> <coughs> I'm gonna drink some water. <clears throat> In my defense, talking for three hours is a lot. All right, Missile and Sissel. If we ever meet again, that's what you can call me. 
Sissel, huh? Got it. You know what, Sissel? I'm going to create my own path, just like you said. Don't jump out the window. Don't jump out the window. Don't. Oh. Baby. <clears throat> Tonight is that holiest of all nights. My deadline. All I need to get some inspiration from the muses is this bottle and some cheese. Here's to the boorish people next door. Are you all right, my darling angel? Oh my god, we've got our, our sexy femme fatale saxophone playing. Have you taken your medicine like a good girl? <clears throat> Well, here I am in yet another strange room. What's with the oddly tense air of this place anyway? Now, where's the little treasure I'm looking for? Ah, there it is. The telephone. Now, if I could just borrow it. So she's got a typewriter. She's a writer. <clears throat> All right, so I've got the bottle. Hold on. Even now, Lynn's life is in danger. I have to use that phone and fast. I can't very well make that woman bring it to me. I guess I'll have to find a way over there myself. <clears throat> There's a dictionary. Why am I examining the dictionary? This thing is too heavy. I can't manipulate it. Maybe that woman built up her destructive power by hefting this puppy. It's more like a weapon than a book. Amazing. I wonder who I or she am gonna have, will have to fight with that. <coughs> okay, I'm gonna turn the windmill. She says, Oh, Mr. Prime Minister, you mustn't. I'm a married woman. And I'm a married man, but we cannot resist this any longer. I'm ready to abdicate it all for you. I don't know that Prime Ministers abdicate. Even if it means my ultimate ruination. Hmm. Ruination? Is that even a word? Yes. Okay, so she's a romance novelist. Amazing. And that abdicate just doesn't look right somehow. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, all writers are familiar with this. In fact, I would say anybody who's written anything. There's a time when you've been writing too many words and then you look at the word on the page and just the letters just look like nonsense. And you're like, I swear that's a word. I swear that's a word. I swear that's a word. But maybe it's not, because it sure doesn't look like one. Yeah, Chrono knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> and Phil, no, you're both writers too. <clears throat> this is gonna nag at me until I'm sure. Okay, let's see if I can do this while she comes. Where is that dictionary? Let's see, I know I put it here somewhere. Now, where could it have gone to? Okay. <clears throat> oh. I just can't find it. Oh, can oh I can get there. Oh. Yes! I'm going to send a rat. Oh my god. I have to like make the rat go the right way. So I go there and then I can go there. Oh, I did it wrong. Oh, okay. I have to reset. Or the, the mouse is resetting. I have to get the timing right here. Okay. <clears throat> All right. We're going to wait for her to... Oh, here she goes. No, I mustn't. I mustn't allow myself to believe in your love, Mr. Prime Minister. But why won't you believe me? My love for you is true, I swear. And it's so strong, it overwhelms me. You know, I've always wondered. If you can be overwhelmed by something, 
Can you be just plain whelmed? Actually, I think once upon a time that was an option. You can be overwhelmed, you can be underwhelmed, you can be whelmed. This is going to nag at me until I'm sure. <clears throat> Oh, did I get the timing wrong? I got the timing wrong. That was too early. But it's strange. I know I left this dictionary on the shelf. It's as if some little angel were playing naughty tricks on me. Perhaps, my darling angel. All right. <clears throat> Time to... Oh, wait, hold on. I'm in the book. That's what I need. <clears throat> oh, we can hear a little girl. Mama! <sighs> I don't know what else I can do here. <clears throat> oh, but I can watch this. Oh, how adorable! Oh my god, she's so cute. Look at how cute she is. What is it, my darling angel? Ow, oh, my head hurts, Mama. You poor dear, and no wonder, with a fever of a hundred and two. Here is to a night of fever hotter than the love of my Prime Minister. It's almost time to go out for my lesson. Can I take the night off? Oh, is she not actually sick and her mom makes her be sick by putting the stuff on her head? I feel like that's kind of what's going on. What is that? Is that, uh, begins with an M, I feel. There's a syndrome of like parents who make their children sick because they like the attention and drama that they get from having a sick child. <clears throat> this is a thing. Munchausen by proxy, thank you, yes. I'm glad Krona knows that. All right. Yes, I suppose that would be best. But wait a minute. I bet you're happy to have an excuse to get out of it, aren't you? Not especially. If I ever don't want to go, I just don't go and pretend I did. I go play with Camilla next door or something. Here is to the blunt honesty of my darling angel. Hey, today is Papa's birthday. Oh, is it? Aren't we going to celebrate together? Let's not talk about your father, dear. Now Mama has to go back to work. I have a deadline tonight, after all. Mama, wait! I have just one thing to say. Don't try and put me in the middle of you two, okay? Whatever could you be talking about? I know what's going on, you know. You write novels and Papa wants you to stop. But it was very selfish of you to take me and leave the house. I want to go home. Now, now, it's time for good little girls to go to sleep, especially sick little girls. I hate you, Mama. <coughs> <coughs> Updated the phone book. We got some new characters. I'm not sure how I'm going to get up there, but I'll figure it out. These two are quite a pair. The father would have to be a pretty strong man to hold his own against them. It sounds like their family circumstances are pretty complicated. I wonder if I had a family. Alright. Valiant Pet. He's doing his best right now to create a path to, just, to do just that. Perfumed Lady. Lynn's Neighbor. She lives in an apartment decorated in red with her daughter. Apparently, she's a novelist who moved here due to a disagreement with her husband. Feverish firecracker. The daughter of the woman in purple. She has a fever of 102 and is resting in bed. Apparently, she and Camila are friends. She isn't going out for her lesson tonight. Okay, so there, so, so it is a lesson and she can't do the lesson because she's actually sick. Okay, so it's the, the night off is not from pretending to be sick. The night off is from her lesson. Which I assume her dad wants her to do. Oh. Ho, 
Oh my, the lamp is out. She just lit the flame on her butt. Eek! What is going on? Oh, I made a typo! She does it all one-handed. The telephone is open. If only I could get to it. I, only, I just need to jump there somehow. I better keep my eyes open for just the right timing to make a move. Oh! She's gonna light the fire. On her butt. I'm gonna have to ride the piece of paper over. Eek! There we go. Wad of paper. Yeah! Perfect. That little girl is sad about that. Oh, I can open the wastebasket. I want to go through here. <clears throat> it doesn't look like I can do anything. Because <coughs> I could just jump into the phone, but I have the option to do something here, so I'm going to do it. It doesn't seem to be... Is it doing that? There's a spark. Yeah, turning this doesn't seem to be doing anything. Okay. I bet that I'm gonna have to come back here and let a human in. That's my guess, is that I'll have to let a human in. Oh, but I'm stuck now. I did it wrong. There's gotta be a way to get back there. Swing, oh, swing harder. Okay. All right, we got it. Little girl is so adorable. Her mom's hair looks like a flower. Like, it looks like a rose, specifically. Oh my god. Oh, he's the prime, he's actually the prime minister. Hello, is that you? How many times are you going to make me tell you? Tonight is that holiest of all nights, my deadline. Please, I'm begging you, change your mind and come home to me. I think you're the one who needs to change his mind. Please, put yourself in my position. You can write your novel just as well from home. Until you change your mind, your daughter and I won't be coming home. Even if that means forever. Look at her face. This is some really, some really top quality expressions. You look so sad. Let me talk to Amelie then, at least. You can't talk to her. She's sick with a fever right now, and I won't have you giving her nightmares. I want to talk to Papa. Now, I don't want to hear your voice anymore tonight. Please, wait a minute. Don't try to call again. I won't answer. I refuse to answer. She's a real winner of a woman. Troubled man's office. This woman is not the greatest of mothers. <clears throat> Now I finally have the telephone lines I need. I'm curious about this woman's husband. But I should go find my only lead first. That hitman who's after Lynn is sure to be heading to the junkyard right now. I'd better hurry. <clears throat> Alright. <clears throat> I'm gonna... Because I don't wanna... I don't know. <clears throat> yes or no. 
Is this a linear game? Or should I not be asking this? Okay, this is a linear game. Okay. So this is a pretty good stopping point. I agree. We are not, we are, I think, about to maybe hit some more drama. But it is around 10 o'clock, which is my streaming time. I feel like I'm actually following the pace that a person is supposed to follow playing a video game, more or less, with this one. I don't know if that's how you all feel about it, but this is, may, may not be the slowest ever. Um, but I don't know. I don't know how long this game is. <laughs> and I do stop to talk some. It's just, it's a very charming game and it's a fun experience. Um, I'm just trying to think offhand. Do I have any fun speculation about stuff? I I mean, it is possible the guy's name isn't actually going to be Sissel. The fact that it rhymes with Missile is funny. Um, or what kind of deal he's doing. Um, I do like this game so far. Unreservedly, without hesitation, like so far it doesn't feel like it's the sort of game that's going to be like this made me cry and changed me and, and and will be one of my favorite games forever and ever um but it's really 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 charming um it's charming it's very funny um it's so stylish it knows exactly what it's doing um and uh i really respect it for going all in on what it's doing um, so I suspect that this is going to be a game that I'm like, oh, this is really cute. I really liked that game, which those of you who've watched me play Undertale may recall that when I first played Undertale, that was kind of like there was parts of it where I was like, okay, it's a cute game. It's sweet. I like it. I find it charming and it makes me laugh, but I'm not quite sure why everyone is as in love with it as they are. And then I got a little deeper and was like, oh, <laughs> Okay, this game is going to re rewrite part of my soul forever. Got it. Um, so it's possible that even a very silly, goofy little game like this may have something in it that is that. Um, but even if it doesn't, being a really fun, charming, entertaining game is absolutely something to love and, 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 and something that, that I would consider an absolute success on the part of the people who made the game. Um, so we'll see, we'll see which, like what way of enjoying it. Like, does it pull me in and pull my heartstrings? Because that's what it takes for me to really 100% fall in love with the game. But right now, like, oh yeah, I really like it. I'm enjoying it. I'm not regretting playing it. And it's, it's fast paced enough. And the gameplay is interesting and it all flows and has enough dialogue that it's not going to have dull moments where I'm just kind of like, why am I doing this? Like... One of the problems that I had with, with Paper Mario A Thousand Year Door is that there was a lot of downtime and the story wasn't strong enough to pull me through the downtime. Um, whereas if I'm playing a JRPG that has more of an emphasis on character and story and emotion, sometimes I'm just running around with Tita smacking things or Cloud smacking things or whatever. Um, and that in itself is maybe not inherently exciting. But I'm so invested in the story and the characters that it, I don't mind. This doesn't really seem like it has downtime. It feels like it's pretty consistently we are going from plot point to plot point to plot point, puzzle to puzzle to puzzle. And the puzzles all make sense. Um, well, the thing is, like, so far there hasn't really, like, the, the, the delight in this is mostly uncovering it and coming into the next puzzle to solve rather than necessarily trying to piece things together. Um, yeah, maybe maybe my Sierra graphical text adventure problem solving uh, will help. Although this doesn't feel like this is Sierra style problem solving. This seems like this is more of a, a logical cause and effect Rube Goldberg invention problem solving. Um, more akin to there was a game back in the day when Lemmings was contemporary. Um, I don't remember what it was called. My cousins had it, but it was basically you build Rube Goldberg machines. Um, and even Lemmings has some element of that. Um, but I, so I have some experience. It's probably the incredible machine. That sounds likely. Um, but because I have a background of thinking about 
games and pu puzzles, puzzles like that. Um, I feel like that contributes, like my biggest problem is that I can't remember what button does what here. Um, but uh, but so the, the, the puzzles are fun and not too hard. And I suspect the puzzle of what's going on is going to be fun and not too hard. I suspect it's going to be a little hard to predict everything that happens in it because it's going to be kooky. And being kooky means that the pieces in it can come from nowhere. They can just throw something in from left field just for the hell of it because they feel like it. Um, and it doesn't have to be consistent. And it can be like a... And they can have literal red herrings and stuff. Um, it's like trying to predict where Dropsy is going. You couldn't predict where Dropsy was going because that game was really, really, really weird. This game has given itself permission. It, it is very weird and surreal in a similar way. So it doesn't have to worry as much about internal consistency as even like a somewhat surreal game. Like a weird, weird random surreal game like that it can do whatever. Like if these guys are aliens or robots or whatever, like they could be, we don't know. Like the world is just weird and it follows its own logic and its logic is not going to be internally consistent, I don't think, and that's part of its logic. Um, so I'm not super, I don't know how much I'm going to be guessing what happens next. Um, but I am looking forward to finding out and enjoying our characters. And I will, hopefully I'll have a few more pieces to start putting together. If you, if you enjoy Lauren's very silly speculation, which I will do even on games that don't warrant it. And this is actually a mystery. So it actually warrants it. I will try. Yes, and it has a diner called Chicken Kitchen, which we'll be going to hopefully soon-ish. Um, but I'm going to, I will try to do my best to piece things together because that's how I roll. But I think I need to figure out how do you talk for three hours without losing your voice when part of that talking is like loudly acting with enthusiasm <laughs> because I, I think I'm losing my voice and part of that is missile by the way I see why the dog is memorable I like that dog that dog is so cute it has so much personality that's clearly the most fun I've had with any of the characters in this game so far all right folks well thank you so much for joining me and for sticking with me um and for for sticking around for a whole new game I hope you enjoyed that I hope you're having fun. I hope it's living up to your expectations. If there's something else that you would like to see me play, I need to finish putting together that list of recommendations. But we'll play this. We might play Undertale Yellow afterwards. And then, I don't know, maybe we'll go back to a, a little bit of Horizon Zero Dawn DLC or something like that. We'll see. Um, thank you all for being here. Again, don't forget to uh, follow the Discord in case, or join the Discord if you haven't yet. Follow me on social media if you want to know what I'm up to. And uh, if you are following my fanfic, I wrote another chapter of it. So have fun with that. Um, I think that's everything. Take care of yourselves, my friends. I'm so sorry about the concert getting canceled last week. I'm going to try to make it up to you. Um, but I have to work out some timing of things first. Um, all right. Good night. I'll see some of you on Thursday for Disco Elysium. Be good.